Hello everyone, welcome to Soul Mermaids Online Book Club. We are outside today, well at least on my veranda, and the crows are very noisy tonight, so I apologise if you can't hear what I'm saying. Um, but I, um, we're going to be talking about Finding My Soul at Sea. Part 1, Chapter 4 tonight, because it's week 4, and that means it's Chapter 4. Very simple, very easy, thought I'd make it nice and easy for everybody. And uh, since we're, you know, a little bit, you know, it's a bit of a changing world right now, um, you know, we need to do what we can to chill out and uh, enjoy ourselves and still enjoy our lives. Um, we also, I also have a glass of wine. <laughs> which is why not you know the odd glass of wine never hurt anyone uh, and that's what my friends in Sydney would say my very good friends who traveled to uh, South America with me which is a whole nother story altogether uh, they always said that a glass of red wine or 12 was uh, the way to keep healthy so uh, if you're out there um, my lovely friends Annie and Scott you guys have inspired me tonight and so we have a glass of wine while we're talking about finding my soul at sea so as I say chapter four um, chapter four in part one is called weird and the reason it's called weird is because there were some really strange things that happened while I was working on board and uh, so I picked out my favorite weird things that happened when I was working on board and uh, those are what I've put into this chapter called weird some of them are crazy crew member stories uh, which is what the first story um, covers a few crazy crew members um, some of them are crazy guest stories. Um, there's a Christmas story um, of something you know weird and silly that we did at Christmas time, and uh, and then uh, there's also the Secret Santa. There's, so there's a couple of Christmas stories in here, um, which is interesting considering it's the chapter called Weird that I've put lots of Christmas stories. And uh, then there is the pa uh, the panties on stage joke that we did to a couple of friends um, as well. So I'm going to go through each of the stories and just share a little bit of each of the stories. I don't want to give away too much, but um, the... I guess the important thing about this chapter was that I wanted to show how even though the, some of these stories are weird, the, the weirdness of it was the normal of my life. This life of living on board a cruise ship and working on board a cruise ship was a huge change to my normal life or my life prior to that which was um, I came from Tasmania a little town in Peng called Penguin in Tasmania and that space was quite you know closeted it was quite um, conservative you know and um, still is you know in Tassie and so going out and exploring the world I had done I had traveled overseas before I worked on board cruise ships and I'd seen some weird things and as I say maybe that's another book in the making there um, of things that I did and saw and crazy things that happened while I was traveling but this particular book is just the weird some of the weird things that happened um, on the cruise ship so this particular chapter so um, I'm just going to read to you a couple of little bits out of the book just so that you can I, you can share in the joy. And uh, this is um, the bit that's called Crazy Crew Members. Let's have another drink. Being in isolation uh, is obviously making me a little bit more, you know, keen to drink alcohol for some reason. Well, you all probably feel a similar way. Uh, anyway. Crazy crew members, working on board ships introduced me to a world of people that I would never have had contact with on land. There were sometimes 52 different countries represented within 1,500 plus crew members. It was a mini world, one where everyone supported and worked together despite their differences. 
and there were some characters in that selection of people. I've since realised that everyone had to be a little bit weird to survive in that environment. One of the social hosts from South America was very loud, happy and enthusiastic and sometimes the crew and the guests could not understand a word he said on stage. But even though there was confusion about the instructions for the activities, the guests would respond to his delightful enthusiasm. My favourite thing about him was after finishing his activities, he would come and tell me about all the wieners. And I would say, what do you mean wieners? And I'd chuckle. And he'd say, oh, they were so friendly and nice. All the wieners. And he waved his hands in the air with joy. Are you really calling the guests wieners? I would like smile and try not to laugh at him. Yes, yes, Pippi Pippi. They are all wieners, but usually there is only one wiener. I usually give them all a trophy. I want to give them all trophies. I have so much fun with them. Ah, yes, I see, I said. Winners. Yes, wieners, he nodded emphatically. And every time I went past his activities from then on, I would chuckle as he yelled, and we have a wiener. I loved his complicated and beautiful authenticity. He never changed for anyone else. One of my favorite people on board. As there were other beautiful examples as well, um, one of my fellow social hosts and I used to run a Survivor at Sea activity which involved us getting people to do crazy things um, like riding on a blow up animal relay, you know, like a giant dolphin or a seahorse or something and they had to ride on the dolphin. That was always entertaining. Uh, we would get them to eat as much Vegemite as they could without throwing up. Uh, we would get them to dive into the pool and like collect cutlery from the bottom of the pool. We would um, have do pillow fights, you know, and we do weird scavenger hunts as well. So we always got into trouble though from the food and beverage manager because we would make all the cutlery rusty <laughs> because the pool was made of um, salt, had salt water in the pool. And so um, the cutlery would get rusty and then we would exchange it and he would know that it was us that had made it rusty because we used to use it for all activities. On, on the Survivor at Sea. Um, but anyway, uh, it was one of the most fun that we used to have, you know, my my best, one of my besties and I used to run the Survivor at Sea and uh, the Video Diary guys used to say that it was one of their um, best activities to film because if they ate lots of Vegemite or crazy food mixes that we made, then uh, they would throw up and that was always good video for the <laughs> for the video fodder. So yeah, that was always fun as well. Um, there's also some funny captains, like, you know, crazy people, captains. Um, you know, one of them was a germaphobic and he didn't like shaking anybody's hands, which kind of you know relevant at this time isn't it folks um with our um process of the virus going on at the moment and uh and there was another captain who used to be like really cheeky and and naughty and he would like make rude comments as people came into the captain's cocktail party which was always fun um oh, there was weird crew members who you know wanted to do crazy weird things um in the bedroom like it's all in there, folks. Um, but my, one of my favourite stories that I like to share, um, as I say, there's um, a Christmas story of, of um, us in Cozumel. There's uh, an X-rated Secret Santa story in there. Um, there is... Um, yeah, and this one is one of my favourite stories. It's called A Typical Evening in the Dance Corridor. And, uh, and this one is, is one of my favourites. Uh, it kind of combines a few different events that would normally happen in um, the Dancers' Corridor. And when I say the Dancers' Corridor, I mean that is the space where a lot of people would gather um, from the entertainment department. So that's where we would have areas of the ship that were for the entertainment department and they all slept, had cabins in that area. And then there was areas that were all for the, you know, the gift shop and then there was areas that were all for the casino and there were areas for the cabin crew and that's a cabin 
uh, stewards and waiters and that sort of thing. So there were areas where we all kind of slept um, in our cabins because it was easier for us to all kind of have allocated sections like that. Um, so what I've done is I've written um, a story called A Typical Evening in the Dancer's Corridor just to kind of show what sort of things happened on a, on a nightly basis um, in the in the corridor so I'll read you the typical evening in the dancers corridor because it's a good example of the weird and wonderful things that would happen to me on a daily basis so what is a typical evening in the dancers corridor well it might go something like this Seth and Tina decided to get their tongues pierced in Cozumel Mexico so their main focus of attention that night was to show as many people as possible up close and personal. You better be planning on using that, otherwise get it out of my face. I pushed Seth's tongue away from my cheek. Oh, come on, Pip, it's awesome! Seth lisped right in my ear. You just said awesome, which is not cool. Seriously, I don't want to see your swollen up tongue. Just then, Linda emerged from her cabin waving a razor. Hey, y'all, check out my pubes. Uh, no thanks. I put my hand up to cover my eyes, but peeked through the fingers. Brad shaved them into the shape of a Christmas tree. For the holidays, Linda wiggled her hips. Oh, that's festive. Danny was always very supportive. Give us a look then, Justin said as he came out of his cabin hearing the announcement. Okay, one, two, three. Three, ta-da, she said as she dropped the towel. I couldn't look away. I mean, when someone says their pubes are in the shape of a Christmas tree, you have to look, right? It's a once in a lifetime situation. Like Samantha in Sex in the City with the lightning bolt, remember that? Oh, there was a collective appreciation from the crowd. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Well done, Brad. I had to applaud the creativity and the neatness. Can I join the party? Maddie came out into the corridor with just a G-string on. Maddie, why don't you have any clothes on? I said as she sat down on the floor with us. Linda just showed you her pubes. What's the problem? She was very comfortable with her body. Ah, touche. Whatever, you do have nice boobs, I said and she giggled. What's going on? I'm trying to hide in the darkness and all I can hear is joy and laughter. Seb emerged from his cabin rubbing his eyes. Oh, lighten up, Sebastian. You just missed Maddie getting her boobs out and Linda showing her pubes in the shape of a Christmas tree. Je Danny gestured to her boobs and her crutch for emphasis. Well, maybe I should come out of my cabin more often, Sebastian perked up a little bit. <laughs> what are you two doing? We are reading our angel cards. Do you want to ask a question? I held up the cards to show him. Yes, I'd like to know when I'm going to see a naked person's bits. He never let me read his cards. Okay, let's see what we get. I grinned and shuffled as he sat next to me. I think the likelihood of nudity is in the, in the near future is very high. Danny said with a laugh. And then there was a loud banging of a door, a scampering sound, and then Drew slid around the end of the corridor and screamed, Who wants to see what's under a Scotsman's kilt? <laughs> Not waiting for anyone's reply, he lifted his kilt and everyone sitting on the floor was given a view of his perfectly groomed tackle. Oh, my eyes, my eyes, Sebastian slumped onto the ground moaning. Everyone was bent over laughing. It was perfect timing. I'm going back to my cabin. You guys suck, Sebastian grumbled. Nighty night, Seb, Danny and I called out to him. Salut, he replied as he shut the door. Whore, we yelled back. I love you. He poked his head back out into the corridor and winked. We love you too, we said. So what are we doing here? Drew said as he sat next to me and gave me a hug. It was a crazy life. I adored it. I miss all the hugs that I got every day. And that is, that's probably one of the things that I'm, that I really 
Yeah, that one of the things that I really miss from being on board is all that physical contact, that that attention to that each and every person that you you met would give you. That you became so close with everybody on board, so close, um, so many close friendships were built from living in that space. Um, and one of the things that is really strange when you come back to land is not having those intimate close close friendships that you have with those people on board and even people who I as I said I never would have considered being their friend necessarily in on land and I certainly you know I might not have even given them time to get to know them on land I might have you know seen them um on the street maybe um met them at work you know but if you only see somebody once a week or once every fortnight you might not get to know them um quickly and you might actually discount them as somebody who is um worth being a friend you know whereas because we were working and working and living and eating and sleeping and doing everything with these people partying drinking you know we got to know everybody really really well and that's one of the things that um, as the story of my time on board goes on you will notice that I speak a lot about how the relationships on board were very different to when you're working on land you know um, and you know it, yes it's hard when you have people who you don't get along with that was um, you know one of the things that I had to deal with and when we get to the drama chapter uh, you will hear more <laughs> hi Kim uh, you will definitely hear more about um, you know the the crazy people the people who really made it difficult to live in that intimate environment and um, and that is that that'll come but one of the things that is my fondest memory is actually knowing getting to know people who and getting to know people really well becoming their close friend in the space of you know very short space of time and still now after you know 15 years or so since I actually worked on board um, I'm close friends with a lot of those people who were in those contracts and even people who were not super close or even um, you know in my intimate friendship group um, I could still contact now and say hey you know is there any chance that we could catch up and have a coffee if I'm in your city and they would be like yeah no worries that'd be awesome so you know even those people who you wouldn't think were your besties were sort of like um, connected to you in a really intimate way um, and that's the beauty of that space um, it's also the thing that can drive a lot of people crazy as well like having people right there in your face all day long is full-on it's intense and as I said at the start of that chapter chapter four of part one um, I say how you know I think you have to be a little bit weird um, a little bit insane um, uh, balanced with you know a, a clear head and um, to, to live on board is is not for the faint-hearted that is for sure so yeah if you haven't already got your copy of finding my soul at sea this is the copy of mine and then I'm sure it's back to front but anyway finding my soul at sea you can get it through my website which is www.pipcoleman.com and um, yeah and I'd love to hear your feedback if you've read the book already please feel free to write in the comments below um, share your stories if you were on the ship with me if you recognize yourself from one of the stories please feel free to say I think that's me um, but I've changed everybody's names just you know for plausible deniability if anyone wants to uh, say no nah, that wasn't me I don't know anything about that I never had my pube shaped into the shape of a Christmas tree nope <laughs> and that's okay so yes that is one of the things that I did when I decided to write the stories was make sure that everybody's names were changed so that it could be anywhere on any ship at any time and that way people can um, you know keep their anonymity if they want to um, 
I did think about doing it with everybody's real names and of course I wrote it initially with everybody's real names in it but um, yeah it was just one of those things where I figured that some people might not be happy with their real name being used and I think that's fair enough um, because it's my version of the story it's my version of my life on board and so they can take it or not you know they can pretend that it wasn't them or they can remember fondly um, whatever they want to do with it and that way um, it doesn't have to affect anybody else's life um, now which is amazing so that's all that I have for you today um, I just want, I don't want to read every single story because then you won't have anything that surprises you and inspires you and you know um, want to give people a chance to hear a little bit meet me ask me questions if you want to and um, I look forward to seeing you next week uh, on Monday for our soul mermaids online book club um, where we talk about finding my soul at sea and next Monday night we'll be talking about chapter five so that's part one chapter five next week which is la, 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 la. chapter five is all about the crazy guests crazy guests so this time this chapter chapter four was the weird stories about the crew members and chapter five is about the crazy guests so we'll talk about them next week but until then I look forward to seeing you soon and thank you so much for joining me and um, hello to everybody across the world. Stay safe and take care and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye for now.